Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So in this video we want to get the M05 chassis built up. So this is essentially part two or video two of my Golf Group 2 slash Renault 5 Turbo builds. Uh, we're doing simultaneous chassis builds um, as well as bodies. So if you haven't seen the first video of this You'll have to go back um, in my video log and take a look at the last one, the first part where we built up the TA05 M4, all carbon fiber, blue bling. It's a 1 12th scale, essentially TRF car, uh, running a 380 motor. So we built this up essentially as like a show chassis for the Golf Group 2 body uh, once we're done running the car. Now I say that because originally I was going to put that body on the M05, um, which is a front wheel drive chassis, and uh, that was going to be the end of it. And then Chris Watson had sent me pictures of this chassis that he had, and I just, I had to have it. So we sourced one on the Buy E Bargains video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. And then we built it in the last video. So absolutely cool build, just what just a cool cool little chassis um you know you look at it and you're thinking it's a trf chassis but it's so much smaller so yeah the purpose of this video is to get the mo5 chassis built up which is essentially going to be the runner chassis um for uh the extra turbo 5 body set that i have as well as the golf group 2 body set although that's going to be a one run and done deal because that body is really for the glass cabinets with my original Turbo 5. So yeah, let me bring the camera over and uh, and uh, we're just gonna get straight into this build. There's, I'm not gonna show you anything. I showed it all in the first video and the videos get long. It's typical Keith, can't shut up, right? 40 minutes to an hour. So we're just gonna get dive right into the ML5 and then uh, I'll see you back here at the end for a closing and we'll have both chassis built up and then the, well, I'll say it at the closing what the next video will be. So, see you in a second with the camera over here. <laughs> so, in this clip, uh, I lost all of my audio. So, we're basically just looking at the M05 kit as a whole. Um, there's nothing really special about the kit when you open it up. It's just uh, something that's typical of Tamiya nowadays where everything is just kind of thrown in. I'm probably referencing on the box that it is a front-wheel drive car. In the TA05 video, I had gone back and forth saying it was and then it wasn't. And in reality, it is. It's just that the motor sits behind the front gearbox instead of in front of it like a FF car. So, yeah, that's, that's all I'm talking about. Now we're going to take a look at the actual kit in the box or get everything pulled out. You get all your plastic parts there. We've got our body shell. I'm just going to put that off to the side because this is a chassis video. I'm just going to get everything dug out. Um, the wheels and tires. On the M05, it didn't come with tires. So I've got one set of tires, two sets of wheels, and it did come with a TBL EO2 speed control. So at this point, we're just going to get everything opened up and broken out into tubs and... Uh, and get started here in a second. All right, bag A is in the bins. We've got tiny little dog bones. <laughs> it's so weird building these kits because everything is so small. Axle shafts, diff cups. We've got some metal diff gears, so that's cool. The uh, TA05 had plastic diff gears. And then step one, it's I've already cut the parts out, but it immediately has me starting to get this chassis together. The other part of this too is the M05, you can run a standard Tamiya battery. And of course it's a 540 motor, whereas the TA05 M4, which is a mouthful, it's running a 380 motor and you have to use the life battery, which is tiny tiny it's only six volt so that car is obviously going to be way slower this one can be 
is going to be way faster. So it'll be a this chassis will be a faster running chassis. That chassis obviously looks the part. It's gorgeous. Um, but I don't know that I can run it. It literally sits like two, three millimeter off the deck. So we'll have to see. I, I had planned on running it on this chassis anyways. And that was supposed to be like the show chassis. But we'll have to see. I, I love that chassis. Just cause, I mean, something... A little TRF chassis is this big. is just gorgeous. I keep pointing over there because I got it sitting in front of me. So bag A is open. I'm going to get started assembling the chassis here and then it immediately has me in step three getting to the diff so as usual i will bring you back as there are things to show you and i forgot a part c14 that's b all right c14 c14 Now I'm ready to go. See you in a second. All right, so I need to slow down here. I'm on step five already, or I'm through step five. So step one had me make one half of the chassis and then the center piece. Step two had me make the other side of the chassis, which included the plastic motor mount. You can get a hop-up metal one. Step three had me make the metal diff, uh, metal gear diff. It was really easy to just washer main gear drops down in grease all over three pilot gears drop in grease all over main gear again washer top with three screws feels great i put the diff cups in spun it around a bit and uh the thing feels awesome sometimes these old older designs that are just so simple like no ball diffs smooth as smooth can be then they had me make front arms, right? And they give you a bunch of different arms, so you have to pay attention to the parts that you're cutting out because this makes three different wheelbases. It makes, I uh, forget what it makes. 210. It makes a 210 and then it makes two other wheelbases. I, I forget what it is, but regardless depending on the car for the mo5 you can make three different wheelbases so then it had me put bearings it comes with bushes i put bearings in my spur gear and my counter gear so i did that and then i got those put in one side of the gearbox and then the center section slides into it like this with three screws that hold it together so now i've got one side of the chassis with my Spur gear and counter gear in place. So now that's through step five. So now it's going to have me. It's funny because these. The, the diff bearings sit inside a retainer. They sit inside a retainer that goes into the chassis. You would have thought they would just mold that to an 1150 or whatever, 11 millimeter, so that you could put whatever size bearing you need in there. So now, what's it got me doing here? I need one of those. One three by fifteen, two three by ten, three by twelve, three by twelve, three by twelve, three three by eight, one, two, three. So now it looks like we're gonna bring this together. Let me load this up with grease. The 
the diff gear itself is like wicked wide and then which way does it show it so it screws this way so that's going in a place like that this is going to get sandwiched over Easy enough. And then where are my screws going? So they're coming in from this side. Tapered head. Three by fifteen. I think that's right. Three by twelve. It's uh, it's not always the easiest to figure out where these screws are going. The bottom. The other three by twelve is on the other side bottom. I know where the three by eights go because they go. They're on the front here holding this whole pile together. Just like the other side. So that's one. So essentially by step six, we've got the chassis assembled with the diff gear in, counter gear in, spur gear in. I've never built an M chassis. I know I've said that a couple of times and we're only five minutes into the video. <laughs> it's so different. It's fun, you know. So just for giggles and shits, we're going to stick these diff gears in. Hey, we did it right. Feels good. So step seven, we're going to get into, it actually wants me to put the outdrives in, and it looks like it wants me to smash some O-rings into the outdrive cups, and then there's some upper arms, and the lower arms are going to get pinned in with hinge pin screws, the old style, and then, oh, it's actually the front arms, then it's got me going into uprights and C-hubs with the axles. And it's going to have me get essentially this whole front end together before we start steering in step 10. And then the motor's getting mounted. So I'm going to keep pushing forward here and I'll bring you back like I usually do as I have stuff to show you. Making some progress here. <laughs> so in the last step we put the diff gear in with the other side of the chassis and then it had me... A while back it had me make the front arms but it had me um, put in the diff cups with the upper arms and then it had me attach the lower arms that we made a while back then it had me get the front uprights and C hubs together which ironically are the exact same as the front on the TA05 M4 I recognized the parts I'm like boy these look familiar and sure enough they're exactly the same so then it had me put that in with the front dog bones and, and we're up to step 10 now where we're going to start putting the steering assembly together. So 
this is essentially where we're at. And I knew I read somewhere that this was front wheel drive. It was driving me crazy. Um, it's front motor mounted, but it's not. I was thinking in the front, like in front of the in front of the front gearbox, and that's not the case. So this is front wheel drive. The motor sits right behind the front gearbox, and where I had read it is right here on the box. Features front mounted motor and front wheel drive for nimble handling. So I knew I wasn't going crazy. I kept second guessing myself thinking that it wasn't after I kept saying that it was. So yes, front wheel drive. So super excited about that. It's the only front wheel drive car I have in the collection. I'm sorry, I can't say that. I have a Maxim FF and I have a Spirit FF. Those are both front wheel drive as well but I have not built either one yet. <laughs> so this is the first front wheel drive that I'm building in the collection. So it should be, it should handle unbelievable on the, uh, on the road. So looking forward to it. I'm gonna move forward into step 10 here where we get the steering put together, a bunch of 850 bearings. Um, it comes with brass, we're putting bearings. And then it's got me getting the motor together. And then step 11. Step 12 has me mounting the motor. And then we'll be getting into bag B where we start building the shocks. So I'll bring you back once the motor's mounted and just before we start bag B. See you in a second. All right, so we're through bag A. backtrack here for a second so when I left you last we had the front end on and we were getting steering set up so we got steering done uh, I, like I said I put the 850 ball bearings in steering is good nice and loose feels good Th this center bridge has me a little bit scared only because it's a little thin you could feel it bending when you were putting the screws in I would say that that's going to be the weak point in the steering. If anything's going to blow apart, if you hit a curb or something, it's going to be the bridge. Um, I'm not sure if they do a metal bridge or not, but regardless, it's in. And then there are three different gearing options for the car. It comes with a, a 20 tooth pinion, but down here in the options, you can go 16, 18, or 20 with the 16 of 7.25 to 1. 18 6.44 to 1 and then the 20 is 5.8 to 1 um, It gives you this little cap here to set your pinion depth um, Easy enough and then it's two three by 20 maybe Three by 25 screws to get the motor set in so when I do um, Encased motors like this. I'll I'll get it in place and then I get one screw in place and I just turn it until the screw pops into the motor. Get it started, walk away, grab the other one, get that one started, make sure you're locked in on both sides and then tighten it up. And then of course, get out your D battery and just make sure that everything is spinning right and that there's no crunching and grinding because there's no getting into that gearbox without completely disassembling the car. So. If you did screw something up, it's going to be a lot of work to fix it, and it would be a lot easier to do in this stage than when you're 50 steps further along. Bag B looks like we're starting to get into shocks. I have shock springs in here, but that's all I've got. So I'm not sure. These are friction shocks on the car, now that I see it. Yay. Um, I know you can get M series shocks like the TRF ones that are on the TA05, but we'll build this stock just for now. I'm not sure how much we'll run this, if it's even worth, um, putting oil shocks on it, but we'll see how bouncy it is. We'll see how bouncy it is in its natural state and then go from there. Bushings. I don't even know why they put them in the kits. 
one bag of hardware for bag B. So I'm going to get the shocks, front shocks built, and then it has us, what are we moving forward to? Rear upper arms and then rear lower arms. So we're going to get the rear end together here, which is basically just a, a passive rear end with it being front wheel drive. So it's coming together. See you in a second. All right, so I've been pecking away here. Gets a little interesting when you start getting into steps 15, 16, 17, and 18. So, step 13, they had me make the four friction shocks. No screws at all. It all just kind of snaps together. They actually feel decent for friction. If, <laughs> if decent is a accurate word to describe friction shocks. Um, then they had me put them on the front here with the front bumper here now this is where it starts getting interesting so there's a big disclaimer up on the front that starts talking about the three different wheel bases so they make an O5S an O5M and an O5L so short medium and long O5M is here as far as making your upper arm support and your lower arm support O5S is on this side so you really have to make sure that you're putting the parts in correctly you can see on the M that the lower support is backwards you can see that the upper support is back one set of holes for the S and then one of the things that's kind of throwing me off so every single picture of this rear sub this rear um, bulkhead so to speak shows it flush shows it flush when you get into the S section, it shows it flush, right? Nothing sticking out. And it continues to show it flush all the way through. When you go back to the beginning, step one, this is that rear support and it shows it coming down flush right here well my piece and this is all molded as one piece has this bump out in the front of it you see that all of this section here which is like 10 at least 10 if not 15 millimeters is past where that flush point is so I don't know what that's about um, I've looked for notes to see if you were supposed to remove that section, but that, I mean, you need to put that through a saw. Like you're not sanding that off. You're not cutting it with snips. Like it's a big chunk of it. I mean, it's like a girder. Um, so I don't really get what that's about. There's only one spot that that upper piece can mount to because it screws in, in the back and then, and this three piece chassis all connects to it and screws together so you can't screw it up it's just extra I don't know that it's going to affect anything we're at the point now where we're doing servo servo body posts wheels and tires it does not look like there is a rear bumper that goes on it maybe that's why they did it to protect the shocks and everything because when you look at the s the rear part of the s here shocks are in place there's nothing back here that's protruding out to protect anything so it would literally be right at the back just something to note it's just different they must have changed that cast at one point because of complaints but they never changed the manual to show that it's different. And then the other thing, and this is a Tamiya first for me, it has you in step 18, let me get the correct step 18, I guess. Step 17, it has you mount the rear uprights and arms as one piece, but there's no axle stubs in. 
and I've never mounted a rear upright before without ma axle stubs. So it shows them going in. And step 23, you gotta you gotta slide them in with a bearing from the back side. Uh, why? I don't understand why they would do that. Like doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But it is what it is. And then uh, so we're on step. 19 and 20 which is getting the servo together and there is an addition sheet and then in this too so even the addition sheet the correction sheet it shows it without that girder protruding forward this is the back side of it and it it doesn't have that's the bottom but it doesn't have the girder showing in this picture either it just is telling you that there's an A7 spacer that gets used when you set the servo to get the height up. Um, they must have used spacers or something at one point. Because you can see where the servo goes. It's definitely, it's way down here versus up top here. Um, so it needs to be brought up. And then that this is that spacer here. So this basically will sit on top. And now that servo sits flat. But it's a good size spacer. I mean, it's probably 10 mil. 8.65. It's bringing up that servo mount. I always use short servos, but you could put whatever servo you want in here. You have a mile of room going down into this servo container. So... I'm going to get a servo out, I'm going to get going on bag C here and getting the running gear in this. I'm not sure yet if I'll do a, if I'll do a, an ESC right away or if we do that in a running video. Sometimes we set them up in a running video. so. We'll have to see. I'm basically just going to be bringing you back with a finished chassis at this point because all that's left is uh, rear axles, which sounds crazy to be this far. Servo, rear axles, steering arm, wheels and tires. And it's done. So see you in a second with a finished chassis. Well, we finished her up. Body posts are on. The only thing left is the battery brackets. Now that I look at it. We had to put the uh, radio trays in. Body posts, which change, obviously, with whatever car you're doing. Those are kind of short. Are those so these just go on like so so yeah the battery post um, in the rear they'll move back for the long forward for the sh um, short and then in the middle for the medium self-explanatory stuff so these can turn and then this piece here can bolt here or back here and then you can turn it 180 degrees so you can make it work for whatever body it is you're trying to fit onto the mo5 and then I did bring the ta05 m4 the wheels are identical size. The wheelbase is identical. So 1 12th, 1 10th, 380, 540. So this chassis is obviously going to rip it up better than this chassis. Although this with a brushless may surprise you. Just for giggles and shits, I decided to fit... The body on so this is pre-drilled from Tamiya 
and obviously it fits perfect and it should awesome freaking car i love this car absolutely love this car so then i was like well i wonder if it fits on the ta05 because we were talking magnets in that video as far as mounting hello <laughs> Fits perfect with the TA05 M4 setup. So we're good to go. We'll be able to swap this body back and forth without any issues at all. Without doing any modifying, without using any magnets. Um, so super excited about that. So I am going to get this mess cleaned up here and I'll bring you back for the M05 closing. And then next video, well, I'll talk about it in the closing. I'll talk about it in the closing. So see you in a second here for the closing. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> what a cool little chassis. I've never built an M chassis before. I know I've said that a couple of times. The only letdown, honestly, I wish they would have done CVAs. The friction shocks let it down. Now, the one good thing is there's not enough suspension travel to really make it like bouncy bouncy. It is in the ass. Sorry for the language. In the back, but the front, because the gearbox is there, the weight actually helps to dampen the springiness of the friction shocks. But yeah, I really wish Tamiya would have just done oil shocks on it. That's really the, the only thing that they really skimped. The rest of the chassis is cool as hell. Um, so, so neat. And the fact that you can make this up in three different wheelbases is even cooler. Um, only on-road front-wheel drive chassis that I have in the collection. So, that is cool. And I have not driven a front-wheel drive car yet in my life or on the channel. So, certainly looking forward to it. I do have a Spirit FF to build and I've got a Maxim FF to build. So, we have some front-wheel drive buggies that need to get built and run on the channel. Although I know just from researching those cars that those were very front heavy for the track. And um, the Maxim in particular is, is kind of known in history as being the, I don't know that it's a fragile car, but it definitely broke a lot back in the day, people that had them. Number one complaint, in fact, I was talking to a guy that used to work at a hobby shop back in the golden era of RC, and he said the number one car that we sold that always came back because of breakages was the Kyosho Maxim FF. So regardless, we're going to build the one we have, but that's for another day. So yeah, this chassis was cool as hell. So much fun to build. I'm glad to see that the wheel size is the same because now I can just order another set of these tires to put on this chassis. It's cool that this body just plops on either one of them. Um, so now it's just a matter of deciding whether to cut the mounting holes in the Renault 5 turbo body set so that it fits on both of them. Although if I do that, I'm not going to be able to show that body on my original. And then I still will have the issue of not having that ABS vent for the front of my original. So I may still have to source that vent. <laughs> I bought that body set to solve that problem and then I end up buying another chassis and needs a body <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> I might send that piece over to Stefan at Accessible RC and see if he wants to try drawing one up and printing one out on his new 3D printer give him something to do so yeah we'll have to see um, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed the chassis build of the M05. Next video, we'll be diving into these bodies. Now, I would like to get them both done in one video, but I don't know that that's going to be possible because this paint scheme is not easy. Um, and if I show you me painting it, it's going to take a whole video by itself. If I just fast forward through the paint, which would be kind of a shame because it is such a hard body to paint, um... That's the only way we can do two in one video. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, we, may, we may have to split it up into two. And then we're going to get these things out for a run. I say that every time. I haven't shown a running video in like eight months on the channel. But that's going to change. I've got a lot of plans for the summer. And we need to get some running videos done. As a way of helping me um, relieve some film pressure for over the summer. To get my 
channel goals done that are off camera. So yeah, if you're not already subscribed, I'd encourage you to subscribe to support the channel. Um, it would be a great, uh, it would be a great thing to do. That's it. <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think of the M05. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the TA05 M4. If you haven't seen this build, go definitely go back and look at it. And then uh, we'll see you on the next video for the bodies. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Boop. Comments. See you next time. Thanks.